Okay, quick clearance check with the brackets mounted. Got the spacers in. It's touching the, uh, one of the lines for the oil cooler. I think that's the return line. It's touching a little bit. We'll uh, get some rubber to space that, but this is where I've lower bracket hangs down right right beneath the bumper right where we want it hopefully that's uh not too far up not too far down we don't have to make too many adjustments i don't think other mounts right here just below the bumper this one completely clears the trans lines as you can see Everything lined up. All right, so we're gonna continue building. Cut off the uh, sides that I know I'm not, or the amount that I know I'm not gonna need since the bumper is uh, exactly 69 inches, uh, give or take, uh, wide. Uh, I just rounded up to 70. Uh, this board was 96 inches. Um, based on our five inch rule, I uh, need to take off six inches, so eight inches from each side, making the board 80 inches in length. So that gives us uh, 70 plus the five inches excess on the side. So we have like an, we basically have a half an inch on each side to work with still. Um, just wanted to explain that. Got my holes marked. And I already got them placed. So I'm just gonna start drilling. I need to show y'all all that, but uh, kind of get them holes placed and then get it on the car. Use your hardware to help you out. Just a reminder, gonna get that next hole drilled. Wing is mounted, or excuse me, splitter is mounted just in the front. Still waiting on hardware for the subframe mounts. Got the wrong hardware, so I had to reorder some. But uh, it's on there. It's on there. Just gotta, just gotta trim and shape.
That's our shape.
back now. using for underneath the splitter found these really neat little uh, countersink washers on Amazon uh, they're uh, aluminum anodized aluminum uh, m6 so it's gonna sit like that underneath the car and uh, some m6 oversized uh, washers 25 mil OD and that's how it's gonna look that's how to be mounted I might recess them <laughs> for now I'm just gonna get them in but uh, I thought this was pretty neat pretty trick looking I also have some black bolts just like this uh, it's gonna be for the top side of the splitters splitter and I will mount the titanium pucks with these as well and uh, the black ones I have so it'll sit on the splitter on top of the splitter same way okay so wrapping up for the day <clears throat> I'm gonna show you everything I've been working on uh, getting a lot closer um, so um, I built this gurney flap wicker bill, whatever you want to call it, with some uh, carbon fiber stock from Summit. It's uh, 0 0.04, it's what, 40 thousandths thick. Um, gloss finish, so the gloss is on the outside. Got uh, more holes than I anticipated on using, but you know, uh, the more mounting points the stronger it'll be so <clears throat> we can always play around with hardware but i figured this will be uh a threat a theft deterrent just in case somebody sees this and think thinks they can put it on their car uh, i doubt i doubt a isf user would steal it but anyway there's a <clears throat> there's rib nuts on the other side of this <clears throat> with some Torx bits and I uh, took this design from Ill Willem or Ill Will EM however you say that um, uh, the guy's name is Will uh, he's been pretty helpful in uh, helping me decide what uh, type of carbon to use so that as you can see there's a good enough bend in this that it follows the contour <clears throat> of the spoiler or the trunk lid spoiler it's pretty rigid it's good and rigid it's tight i think it'll be fine uh it'll hold up to wind pressure uh if it, if i find that it's too tall i can always take it down I left it, I gave it some height on purpose. Um, I mean, I kind of just left as much material as I thought necessary. But uh, the difficult part about this is getting uh, the curvature right. Because uh, the, uh, the, the trunk goes like this, like a U shape. So not only does it have to bend 
with the trunk, but it has to also contour uh, this line here. So got that mounted. Looks pretty neat. You can see the roof nuts in there. And pretty proud of that. So one of the benefits of this by itself, it'll create downforce. <clears throat> Obviously, this is more of a NASCAR style uh, spoiler, um, air spoiler. Um, yeah, it might be a little draggy. It might create some resistance, but hopefully when we get the, the wing on here, uh, what this will do is basically speed up the air going under, traveling under the wing, because as we all know by now, the air that's going under the wing and attaches to, sorry, attaches, attaches to the underside of the wing, that's what's more important. So you want that air to not only stay attached to the bottom of the wing, but get out as fast as possible. So this is actually gonna, this is actually gonna speed up the air because we're, the air's coming in and it's closing or it's getting, you know, it's, it's having to go through this and the bottom of the wing. So essentially it's just speeding up the whole uh, downforce effect. So that's the idea there. Uh, moving on to the front. And uh, this is something I added for the novel hood. Uh, by the way, these two pieces are something that I wanna start selling. So what we have here are some air extractors for the front, for the hood vents. And pretty rudimentary design right now. Uh, nothing too special about them. We gotta fix that one. But uh, basically, uh, as the air hits this, uh, they're not secured yet, so that's why they're moving around. As the air hits this edge right here, again, it's gonna create a high pressure area along here. And as it forces the air up over it, it's also pulling the air out of the vent. Uh, that's just one of the characteristics of these type of uh, air extractors. Uh, it just, again, accelerates the air coming out of the vent. So it uh, improves cooling, improves downforce, because you have essentially another downforce element on the front of the car. A little draggy, but that's why you keep them low. Uh, and then the, the hood actually contours right here, so that kind of helps uh, direct the air. Um, so you get more downforce in the front because you have high pressure in this area. You have air being sped up coming out of the vent and you get better cooling. So really three benefits to that. Um, you get a lot better cooling. And lastly, <clears throat> finally got the splitter fully mounted um, oh wait let's move back to the hood so um, I was gonna use some M4 hardware but as you can see I can't get a nut on that so um, I'm gonna rivet them and I'm also going to uh, clearance that so I get you know the most out of this opening here so i'll just trace along this bottom edge of the hood and then trim out that piece of carbon so i uh not quite in my in my holes right there but you get the idea let me fix that real quick so fixed them uh tried to get them as even as far as the height as possible but it's not really a big deal if they're not uh exactly the same height down to the millimeter. Um, so I did get some button head bolts to
to secure these, but uh, I'm gonna end up having to use some rivets. So I found some black aluminum rivets on Amazon and uh, I'm just gonna mount these permanently. But at least I have the holes so I can shape the bottom like I need to. Uh, I don't really see myself doing more trimming to this. Um, but again, pretty proud of this, more so of the idea and the execution. Um, ideally, uh, you would want to have extractors on the side as well, because believe it or not, uh, they still have an effect even running along the side of the vent. So that's something I can add in the future, but uh, I'm not actually making this piece yet. Maybe if I make something, I'll make something that wraps around and follows this edge. Um, there are, uh, you know, hood extractors for vented hoods like these that have a, a one piece, uh, you know, wicker bill that runs along the whole side or the, the entire uh, edge of it. Obviously, I don't have the ability to do that right now, <clears throat> so it's the next best thing. Um, pretty, pretty neat if you ask me. So, just one of those things that uh, just give you a little bit more. And then, lastly, <clears throat> when uh, got the splitter mounted, so. The hardware I chose for this um, could have been better. All right, just to explain what's going on here, uh, after speaking with uh, Mike and some of the guys on the Professional Awesome Forum, I realized that I need a, a Z bracket to mount the rear of the splitter. Uh, it's going to be impossible, impossible for me to get uh, seven bolts in place with the car on the ground and I'd have to lift it up every time to mount the splitter to take it on and off. And uh, that takes away the center lift point or jack point in the front uh, if I have the splitter on. So uh, I ordered some uh, Z aluminum rod from McMaster Car and uh, gonna make a uh, Z channel bracket for that. And I went ahead and uh, upgraded the elevator bolts to spreader place instead from professional awesome uh, just to give it uh, more rigidity and more support uh, it's kind of a, a no-brainer uh, that's why I'm able to stand on it um, so I didn't, didn't really need to show that basically did the same procedure as I did with the elevator bolts I just had to route out a larger area so there's that I was mounting the splitter plates and uh, that piece of aluminum I had running across here was interfering with these rear bolts. So, and then I was trying to clearance it and then I just messed it up. So I gotta get another one and I am gonna reintroduce that, but uh, I am going to mount it in the opposite direction or I'm gonna mount it here instead of onto here. So I was trying to make that work and uh, yeah, you live and you learn. But uh, good thing is I can now do this. Mind you, I am exactly 250 pounds. Jack is down. And I am right on the edge. I'm not going to jump up and down because I am 250. And considering this thing makes 250 pounds of downforce or more, I don't think it'll make that much. I don't actually know how much these splitters are supposed to make, but as you can see, it's holding my body weight. 
and uh, there's no, it's not creaking or anything. It's, it's perfectly solid. I'm standing on the edge of it, basically. So our splitter is mounted. We uh, we just got to trim some more, uh, get our our uh, outlines accurate, and uh, we got downforce, baby. Looks like it's level, so. Here we are in real time. We're gonna see where we're at. E. And it looks like we are. We're too high in the front. It is two degrees. Too high. All right, so. Right now, we're just cutting the uh, hood extractors, trimming them to uh, increase that opening a little. So got the uh, hood extractors uh, trimmed on the bottom side. Okay, just giving you another look at the top. And uh, the bolts might fall out, so I gotta hold it. But as you can see, we are pretty much, we're good, fully trimmed on the bottom so not impeding any airflow see this one is trimmed I might throw the mesh back in there I'm not sure yet but uh Really happy with this. I can't wait till I get the rib nuts and, uh, <clears throat> or excuse me, the rivets and secure it for good. But before that, we'll uh, we'll make templates, of course, so that we can make more. Cause uh, once it's on there, it's on there. <laughs> 